What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel again. It is the 1st of September and we do have a new hero of the month in the portal and she looks pretty damn awesome, um, if I say so myself. I love, love, love this card and um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to be fair. I think that it's been a long time since we had a really decent hero of the month and I'm crossing my fingers, I'm holding my toes and my thumbs and everything else that this is going to be that hero. So let us have a closer look at Chloris today. This huge purple head, um, forest fairy, whatever the heck she is, she looks insane. Um, so I'm really, really hoping that she's going to be good. Um, so of course she is a nature hero, really good in keeping with the theme. Like I said, the art on this card is really excellent. I really think that they should do more like this. In fact, I think they should do like 3D characters with 3D cards where you can spin them around and do all sorts of stuff. But that is neither here nor there. Um, I do like the art. Um, she is of the Sorcerer class, uh, which is pretty cool because she gets the Master Delay. If you do use Master Emblems, uh, she can drop Mana Generation by 50% for two turns. And she can give negative attack as well if you do use the Master Delay. It's a very good talent class for defensive teams because it just triggers and then the other team have no idea what just happened. So it's really good. She is of the Legends 2024 family. No idea what the benefits are going to be for them. Still another 121 days or about four months or so until we know exactly what's going on there. Passive wise, she does get the dual passive, so she gets a resistance against healing ailments. So she has an innate resistance against status ailments that affect healing. This is very important um, because she does heal. Um, so having that innate resistance against status ailments that affect healing means that she's going to be, it's going to be complementary uh, to her own special skill, which is absolutely awesome. And then the second passive again is going to help her. Um, when an sorry, when an enemy casts their special skill, this character has a 50% chance to boost this character's health by 100. So it's any enemy casting their special skill gives this character a 50% chance to boost their health by 100. It's not a lot. I'd probably prefer it if it was more. Since it is a 50% chance, I think we could get away with, you know, boost by... 200 maybe 150 175 let's just push this as much as possible um but it is really awesome that she does get that benefit from the enemy casting that she can boost her own health she just prepares herself for that incoming attack so it's really really useful and it could be the difference between an attack killing a hero and chloris surviving that attack so i really do like that as well um, in terms of these stats, now this is a biggie uh, for these heroes, the heroes of the month, because they are competing with hero stats getting up to nearly 1100 now. So I'm, you know, shaking in my boots, but I'm going to switch off the max power preview right now. Okay, 996. It's not, it's not bad, you know, like it, it's, you know, nearly a thousand team power. I mean, back in February... Uh, was the first time this year that we, in February we crossed over the thousand team power mark for brand new heroes being released. Uh, so we're now about, what, six months away from that. And we've got that with the heroes of the month as well now. So, you know, it is quite good. Um, and it does mean that their stats wise, they should be really comparable to some of the top heroes. The other thing I want to mention about Chloris is if you look over her stats here, she is very defensive which makes a big difference because you, you you're front loading towards the defense and that means that her survivability is going to be really good when compared with the other newer heroes so that's a big big tick in the right box so we can see her attack stat is only 894 which is fine her attack stat could literally be zero i don't want to know about attack stats if it's just a healer um 1161 defense is solid very very solid and 1668 health is also really good. Um, so you can see there with the second limit breaks, we're going to be looking at up to 1500 over 1500 on defense and nearly 2400 on health. So really, really good um, balance of stats here. Um, and then the heal increase. So at the start of each battle, she gets the talent, which increases any healing she receives um, for six turns. That's a good, good, decent time. 
and um, and it means she's going to benefit extra 50 percent of her healing which is awesome um so so far so good and uh let's move over to the special let's see if we can keep this up so her special skill is called invigorating pollen um you can see the flowers around her <laughs> invigorate what's in this pollen this invigorated pollen i wonder <laughs> Um, so she boosts the health of all allies by 600. That's a decent boof, boost at average speed. Um, boosted health can exceed max HP. All allies then regenerate 400 boosted health over four turns. And all allies get plus 50% attack as long as the caster has boosted health. This effect can't be dispelled. This is awesome. You know, I've been using Disco Melendor against the Titans as well for that extra 50% attack. But now I can hopefully have it with a boosted health hero as well um, and that health boost over time. Um, and then the element link gives all nature allies 20% critical chance for, for six turns. So again, gonna be a really good option against Titans and the effect can't be dispelled. So she's giving 50% attack to the entire team as long as she's got boosted health. And she boosts her health by that 600 plus the 400 every turn. Plus she gets that passive which boosts her health um, by 100 whenever the enemy casts this special skill. So most of the time this hero is going to have boosted health. Um, so all the time she's got that boosted health, all allies get that 50% increased attack. That is awesome. Right, that is really cool. Um, and then that extra critical chance as well. So where is she going to be good? She's an excellent healer. Downside, she doesn't have any like cleanses or anything like that as part of her kit. No dispels, um, no ailment protection. Um, so she is leaving herself wide open. But as far as a healer is concerned, she's probably one of the better healers that we have in the game at the moment. That's a massive health boost at average speed. Up front, 600. Then that extra health boost over time. It is dispellable. Um, but that being said, the attack increase is not dispellable and that's going to have a massive impact on all of your team members as well. So she's going to be really good against Titans. I think she'll be good in raids and wars as well. I think she'll be a little bit of a sort of meat shield on defensive teams. So I probably wouldn't advise to use her on defense. I think that better options for defense will be hitter, hitter healers. You don't need a massive heal. You need somebody that does damage. Um, and heals and uh, Cloris is not really going to be that option for you but as far as attacking teams and as far as titans are concerned I think this hero is in my book going to be an absolute A plus hero and um, I'm very very happy to say that we have finally got a decent hero of the month when I say decent one that can compete at the absolute top level so yeah um, that's pretty much all I've got to say about Cloris. Please do let me know in the comments what you guys think of this hero. As I've said, I think she's absolutely awesome, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Um, please do drop us a like, subscribe to the channel, share it with your mother, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.